This is a video for the RTB APS system brought to you by Innovative Traffic Solutions. Uh, today we're going to take you through some of the basic features of the RTB APS, uh, more so just a demonstration of it in action at our Burlington pilot project, which is at Lakeshore in Hampton Heath. Please enjoy. This here is the RTB APS push button. As you can see, it is mounted directly on the pole. Above is the RTB BLX acoustic units sitting just beneath the pedestrian signal. Lines. Now I would like to demonstrate pressing the APS button. This is a basic press with no hold. As you can see, instant response. One of the features of the RTB APS push button is that there's actually two buttons combined into one. As you've already seen, the front facing sensor button can be used as a regular push button, also as an APS trigger with a three second hold. Uh, this separate button underneath is for people with sight loss they can use the arrow to orientate themselves toward the crosswalk and out of harm's way. The button also has a deep compression, which is great because it gives the user the tactile feedback they need to know that they have triggered the APS and that they will soon be getting the walk guide signal. Uh, some cities are using both. Uh, the three second hold on the front for the APS as well as the lower button. It all depends on how you want it programmed and how the mobility specialists in your area think it will be best suited to the people who use that route. A couple other advantages to having the dual button design are one, having the lower APS button is great. Once people are familiar with it, you can take away the three second hold and simply use the lower button as your source of APS. This prevents people from giving false APS calls, creating noise pollution when you don't actually need it, and minimalizing how many times a day you hear the cuckoo or the Canadian melody or whatever sound format that you use in your municipality. Now on top of that, that lower button can be rotated at 360 degrees. And as you can see, not every button is able to be placed in a location where an arrow slapped on the front of the button will actually direct people towards the crosswalk. With the lower button, it can be rotated 360 degrees, thus this never becomes an issue. As you can see here in Burlington, to meet AODA standards, this is where the button had to be placed. With current infrastructure's arrow setup, it would be an issue. Now I'm going to demonstrate the three second hold to trigger the APS. Now the sensitivity of the microphone on my smartphone does not quite give a good example of how well the acoustics are being controlled here. But as you can see, as we move towards the crosswalk and away from the crosswalk, the walk guide signal increases and decreases exponentially. This is all part of the sound control design of the system and this is why it's been so successful in Germany and other countries where they are very, very populated and densely populated.